Sometimes old designs can still prove useful, and in the case of the biplane and World War II, many nations continued to use biplanes in specific roles and with great success, even though the piston engine monoplane and the early jets seemed on the surface to have erased any need for such an antique design of aircraft. The British continued to use the fairy swordfish torpedo bomber throughout the war. This slow, fabric-covered relic, nicknamed the string bag, still proving its value as a carrier strike aircraft. Swordfish sank an Italian battleship and badly damaged two others, the Battle of Taranto in 1940, and most famously damaged the German battleship Bismarck, leading to her eventual destruction by Royal Navy's surface ships in 1941. The string bag didn't leave Royal Navy service until May 1945. The Italians employed the Fiat CR-42 Falco biplane fighter on all fronts Mussolini was involved in. The battles of France and Britain, Malta, North Africa, Greece, and on the Eastern Front. After 1943, even the Germans employed some as ground attack planes. It was exceptionally manoeuvrable and very sturdy. And speaking of the Germans, they too had a biplane that was spectacularly successful, but today is virtually unknown, the Henschel HS-123. It entered service in 1936 and was a single-seat dive bomber. All metal, with clean lines and very manoeuvrable, the HS-123, like the Fiat CR-42, was a sesquiplane, meaning that the lower wings were significantly smaller than the upper wings, unlike traditional biplanes. The HS-123 was brought into service to provide a stopgap between the older Heinkel HE-50 biplane dive bomber and the new Junkers Ju-87 monoplane dive bomber, the famous Stuka. The standard Luftwaffe version of the HS-123 carried four SC-50 50kg bombs in lower wing racks and an SC-250 250kg bomb on a centre rack. It was armed with two MG-17 7.92mm machine guns firing through the propeller. The HS-123 first proved itself in combat flying with the German Condor Legion in the Spanish Civil War of 1936-39, proving itself an excellent ground attack aircraft that could bomb accurately and absorb significant punishment from ground fire. The Spanish nationalists purchased some for their own air force. China also received 12 HS-123s, which they used as dive bombers, particularly in 1938, against Imperial Japanese Navy warships on the Yangtze River. The Luftwaffe, however, wanted to get rid of the HS-123, considering it an outdated type by the outbreak of war in 1939. The remaining 39 HS-123s still in German service did go to war in Poland, where the Stuka was winning all the laurels, and the 123s actually performed brilliantly, accurately bombing Polish positions. Like the famous Stuka Howl, the HS-123 could also make a terrifying noise in battle, the pilot changing the RPM on the plane's engine to produce a gunfire-like noise that genuinely frightened troops on the receiving end. The HS-123 was also more rugged than the Stuka and was better able to soak up damage and still remain airworthy. It could also be operated with extreme ease from very primitive frontline airfields and was very easy to maintain. During the German assault west in 1940, the HS-123 continued to prove itself a really excellent dive bomber and general ground attack aircraft and many times the HS-123 unit was the furthest forward of all the Luftwaffe assets from the French and Belgian campaigns, flying more missions per day than the Junkers 87 Stuka squadrons could match, really impressing the German high command with its rugged durability. The Stuka came unstuck during the Battle of Britain, when they became easy prey for RAF Spitfire and Hurricane monoplane fighters, and the HS-123 was not used in the Battle of Britain as it lacked the range to operate successfully over southeastern England. It was retired, and the squadron's personnel transferred onto the new Messerschmitt BF-109E fighter bomber variant. However, against an enemy with limited numbers of modern monoplane fighters, the HS-123 could still be very effective. 
A new unit was formed equipped with 32 HS-123s and fought very well during the campaign in Greece in 1941, once more proving its value to the Germans. So it was that during Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union that kicked off in June 1941, a unit of 22 modified HS-123s serving alongside 38 BF-109Es was dedicated to ground support missions. The 22 HS-123s receiving more armour and cannons housed under the wings. The joint unit advanced on the central and northern sectors of the Eastern Front, fighting at Bryansk, Vyazma and Leningrad. It became clear that the Messerschmitt 109E was struggling in its role, with its weaker undercarriage and constant engine problems, and its engine could not absorb ground fire punishment like the doughty HS-123, this aircraft continuing to function at optimal performance on the Russian front. The unit fought in the Battle of Moscow in winter 1941, flying open cockpit biplanes in the Russian winter, proving extremely arduous for the pilots, but they still proved effective. In summer 1942, the HS-123s took part in the battles in the Crimea, followed by the Second Battle of Kharkov and even the initial battle for Stalingrad. But losses were proving difficult to replace, as the type was no longer in production and it was necessary to scour Germany for any HS-123s to keep the squadron operational. Aircraft were taken from training squadrons and even derelict airframes were returned to service. In January 1943, General Oberst Wolfram Freiherr von Richthofen, commanding Air Fleet 4 on the Eastern Front, requested that due to the HS-123's remarkable ability to continue to perform in all kinds of adverse weather conditions encountered on the Eastern Front, production of the HS-123 should be restarted and more of these remarkable aircraft sent to frontline units. This, however, was not to be. Henschel had stopped production, as I mentioned, in 1940, and the factory was no longer able to produce such aircraft. The last couple of dozen HS-123s soldiered on, fighting at Kursk and in the Crimea until late spring 1944, when the squadron retired the type, and they transferred onto the Junkers 87 Stuka. Today, no examples of this remarkable aircraft remain. Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.